Hey, you're watching BK Hobby, and today I'll show you how to build and install this awesome project from Darusha Digital Designs called the Home Automation Switchblade, or HASP for short. The HASP is basically a customizable touchscreen you can put in your wall plate in place of a spare switch, for example, to, and use it to control your home automation system. Now, the HASP project was originally designed for Home Assistant, but I was able to modify the configuration and adapt it for use with OpenHAB. So today I'll also show you how to configure it for OpenHAB. So what can you actually do with the HASP switchblade? Well, as you saw early on in the video, I was using it to change the lighting scenes in my master bedroom, as well as display status information like the time, temperature, or date. But Darusha created multiple screen types for us to use. For example, a music controller, a screen full of dimmers for lights, an alarm panel entry keypad, and even a 3D printer status with a graph. So really it's up to you to decide how you want to use the HASP once you have it installed in your wall. Okay, so let me show you what you need to build your own HASP. Number one, you're going to need these custom made 3D printed enclosure and switch plate. The enclosure holds the electronics, the switch plate is custom made to hold the electronics enclosure, and this one in particular also holds two decor style switches. This is the plate I printed because I wanted to use the HASP in the three gang work box. However, if you go on Darusha's GitHub repository, I'll link to it in the video description, you can download 3D printable models for all kinds of different configurations. Now most of these, including the project itself, are meant for North American style work boxes. But I know Darusha has been developing models for the UK and other European countries. So this project may be available to more people around the world pretty soon. Okay, so as far as the electronics components, you're gonna need a PCB to hold all of them together. Darusha also designed this cool looking PCB and shared the Gerber files for us. So you have two options. You can either take the Gerber file from Darusha's GitHub repository and go to a site like, for example, PCBWay. If you haven't tried PCBWay.com already, they're a great fab shop. I use them all the time for my own projects and I've had great luck with them. They make real good quality PCBs. They make them fast and you can get them shipped to you within one or two weeks if you want. You simply select the length and width of your board, the type of the board, and you send them the Gerber files. And for this type of board, you can get 10 PCBs for $5 plus shipping. The other option you have is buying these PCBs directly from Darusha. He has them available on his Tindy store. And while I'm here, I'll also mention that if you're not comfortable building the HASP yourself, you can get it directly from Darusha. He also sells them fully assembled on his Tindy store. Again, I'll have links for all of these in the video description. So next thing you need is a Wemos D1 Mini, and they usually come with headers, and we're going to need them. You're going to need an AC to DC PCB power supply, a 4-pin JST SH header to connect the PCB to the HMI display, which is this one right here. It's a next-gen 2.4-inch screen HMI from IT. The HMI also comes with a 4-wire harness and it's got a JST SH on one side which will plug into the PCB and it also has DuPont connectors on the other side but we'll be cutting these off pretty soon. You're also going to need a micro SD card to load software onto the HMI display. Next you're going to need some wires to bring in the AC power to the PCB and again you have options here. You can get this appliance style cable from your local box store but I prefer these stranded wires I cut from some leftover cable from installing a ceiling fan. I built one unit with the appliance wire, but I'm building this one with these stranded wires. I prefer these because they fit in the PCB a lot better than the other ones. If you're using these thinner cables, you also want to grommet, and this one's a 316 by 516 that will fit inside the electronics enclosure to prevent the wires from chafing. And then for the assembly of the hasp, you just need several types of fasteners. Some M2 inserts for the switch plate, M2 by 20 millimeter socket head screws to attach the electronics enclosure to the switch plate and some m2 by 6 millimeter self-tapping socket head screws to secure the PCB inside the electronics enclosure. So let's start building the HASP by populating the PCB first. Just so we don't make any mistakes going forward, we'll call this side with the Wemos and the Meanwell logos the top of the PCB and this side with the HASP and open source hardware logo the bottom side of the PCB. So the first thing we want to do is populate the 4-pin JSTSH header. Now 
Okay, after we did that, we'll populate the headers for the Wemos D1. You could technically solder the Wemos D1 directly into the PCB, but there's plenty of clearance height-wise, and it's better to, to leave it on pin headers just to make it removable in case you need to swap it out. And we'll use the short female headers that came with the Wemos D1 kit. Okay, and finally, we're going to attach the Meanwell IRM-03-5 ACDC power supply to the PCB. And there is only one way it will fit. So you see there's two pins on the right here, one pin on the right here, and two of the AC input pins on the bottom left. So I'm going to make sure that I match that configuration and slot the power supply in, and then solder it in. Okay, so we're pretty close. The last thing I need to do to the board is solder on the AC power wires. So again, I'm going to be using these stranded, probably 18 gauge copper wires. And I want to have AC slash L to the line side. That'll be my black wire. I'll snip off the excess. And then the neutral side will be my white wire. Now you want to be extra careful with these. First, make sure that when you were sliding the wires in, you didn't leave any loose strands that could come across the gap and touch each other, because that will cause a short. And just make sure that you securely solder them in, and then just make sure they're straight coming out of the, the back of the PCB so they fit into the enclosure. All right, so we're going to leave the board on the side for now, and we're going to move on to the Wemos D1. So the way the Wemos D1 Mini is installed on the PCB is with the board facing this direction, the ESP chip with the Wi-Fi antenna will be on top. The Wi-Fi antenna should be facing this row of extra pins on the side of the board, and the reset switch should be here on top. So now we'll just attach the headers to the Wemos D1 and solder them in. And with that completed, we can stick the Wemos D1 onto our previously completed PCB. And for now, we can put the completed PCB off to the side and move on to our HMI. Now this touchscreen HMI, while it's only 2.4 inches, is the biggest piece in this whole design. So Darusha had to come up with some compromises to allow the thing to fit in the wall. For example, the enclosure that you see here is pretty tight and will not fit over this JST connector here. And that is why I said I was going to use the JST header on the harness that came with the HMI only to plug it into the PCB. On this side of the harness, we're going to take these four wires, cut them pretty close because again, we don't want to have too much wire inside the enclosure. And we're going to solder them directly to the four pins that the JST header is connected to. So obviously we're going to need to remove this JST header first. And this is a bit of a hard task because you can screw up the board if you're not careful removing this JST header. So I'm going to show you how to do it pretty safely and then you can decide for yourself if you want to do, do this project yourself or if you just want to buy a complete unit from the Rusha. And you will need a heat gun for this in order to heat up the pads that are holding the JST header to the PCB. And I do recommend using something like this PCB holder so that you can work on this safely without heating up your desk. Okay, and just to help the process to heat this up and remove it, you can cut these four pins directly off the JST header. That way you're only fighting against the ground pads on either side of the connector. So this should help us get this done quicker and not heat up the board too much. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my heat gun pretty close to here and use needle nose pliers to pry on the JST connector. There goes one, and there goes the other pad. Okay, and then I just want to remove the remaining pins. 
and then I'll put some solder on the pads. Okay, and now that we've added the solder to the pads, we need to hook up these wires. And we have very little space to work with in the enclosure, so we're going to cut these wires pretty short, about this much. And I'll strip them, thin the wires, so they're easier to attach to the PCB. Now to actually attach these wires, there is a specific color code to these that follows from the HMI to the PCB. And on this PCB, holding it this way, from the bottom, the connection, the pins go 5 volts, RX, TX, ground. If you look at the HMI PCB, with the SD card slot facing up, the pins go 5 volts, TX, RX, ground. So, besides being reversed upside down, the TX and RX pins correspond to reverse RX, TX pins on this side. That is exactly how it's supposed to be wired. The receive pin on the PCB going to the, to the Wemos is supposed to go to the transmit pin on the HMI. And the transmit pin on the PCB goes to the receive pin on the HMI. So I'll start by soldering these pins to the PCB. And just be careful doing this because I just actually bridged the RX and TX pins together, so I need to I need to remove some of that extra solder. And just to secure these wires in place so they don't pull off the solder pads, I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot glue in this area just to help them stay in place. Should be enough. Before I put these pieces all together in an electronics enclosure, I will actually load them up using a USB connection to the Wemos D1 and load all the firmware. Okay, so when I hooked that up to my computer, that provided power to the HMI, so I know that the HMI is working and it's loading up its demo routine, which I can use to just test out the touchscreen functionality and make sure that's working. Okay, so let's power this down for now and let's start loading some of the software. So, one thing that I will mention is that the GitHub repository that Darusha created is absolutely amazing. He's got all kinds of information on here, pretty much a step-by-step -step description of what I'm showing you right now as well, including the proper way to place the components on the PCB, the proper way to hook up the wires, and connect everything together. So definitely use this resource as a way to make sure you're doing the right thing while putting the hats together. In order to load the firmware on the HMI, which is the first thing we want to do, we'll click on this next-gen HMI link. And we want to download the haswitchplate.tft file if you're using the basic version of the next-gen HMI, which is the standard version. If you have an enhanced version, you will download this TFT file called haswitchplate-enhanced.tft. But for me, I'm going to click on haswitchplate.tft and click on download. Okay, so now I'll take my SD card, put it into an SD card reader, and pop it into the PC. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that the SD card is formatted in FAT32 file system. So we'll just go ahead and reformat it. And then we'll take the downloaded haswitchplate.tft file and put it in the root directory of the SD card. And now we'll take the SD card out of the computer and insert it into the HMI SD card slot. And now when we power up the Wemos D1 again, the HMI will read the TFT file off the SD card and will load the firmware. On. And you'll see the progress bar as it happens. And once everything works correctly, it will say update successful. Great, so now we just power it down again, remove the SD card, and when we power up again, we'll see that the screen just shows hasp initializing. So the HMI is fully loaded, it's just waiting to receive data from the Wemos D1. So now we need to download the Wemos firmware. And for that, we also already have a pre made binary file. So from the main repository, go into the Arduino Sketch folder and download this binary file, hswitchplate.ino.d1mini.bin. And we will need another tool to download the binary file onto the Wemos, and we'll use the ESP Easy Flash tool for that. So we'll go to the ESP Easy GitHub repository, go into the release link, and download their latest .zip file. Once it downloads, we'll extract all of its contents to the downloads directory, and we'll use this Flash ESP8266 tool to complete the job. 
But first, we'll need to take this binary file that we downloaded for the HA switchplate and move it to this ESP flasher directory. Double click on flash ESP8266, and my computer's already detected the Remos D1 on COM3. So I'll just select the firmware, that bin, we'll click flash, and we'll wait for the firmware to upload. You should be able to see the LED blinking on the Remos D1 as this is happening. And once the flash completes, hit OK, close all these windows, and when the Remos restarts, you'll notice a completely different screen than the HMI, which is the initial configuration screen. This is what we'll use to configure the HASP once it's installed in the wall. But for now, we'll disconnect it all and put this whole unit together. While I'm putting the enclosure together, I'm going to disconnect the HMI connector so I don't pull on this wiring too much. And I'll start by putting the PCB inside the enclosure. First, I want to take the grommet and insert it into the wire hole. Make sure that it sits in there. And now I can put the PCB inside the enclosure. So first I'll feed the wires through the grommet and then I'll push the PCB all the way down towards the back of the enclosure. So it already sits pretty snugly, but I'll use the two M2 by six millimeter self-tapping screws on the two holes here to secure the PCB inside the enclosure. You don't have to get it too tight just so the screws holding the PCB in place. Okay, now I'll take my wall plate and we need to put the inserts into the holes that are made for it. So I have these four inserts and they have to fit into the four holes on each side. Depending on how well calibrated your printer is, these may be a tight fit or they may be a loose fit. If they're a loose fit, you can use some hobby glue and glue them in place. In my case, they're a tight fit, so I will actually use my soldering iron to melt them into the hole and secure them in place that way. So first, I just want to make sure that they sit fairly upright in the hole. And then I'll use my soldering iron to very, very carefully ease them in into the hole. So you don't want to allow the insert to get too hot because it will melt all the way through the plate. So just very carefully heat it up and watch it go inside. But be very careful not to go too far. Do it a little dab or a little piece at a time and make sure that it's going in evenly. And it's okay if it sticks out just a little bit. And I'll do it for the rest of these. I'm using the soldering iron tip to straighten them out. Okay, I'm just checking from the side to make sure that they are even. And that's it. And then to finish putting everything together, first make sure you remove the protective foil from the HMI. And now we have to make sure that a couple things align together. Number one, the side with the connector of the HMI fits in with the side of the wall plate that has this little arrow right here. There's an arrow that points to the top of the unit. So just insert it over top of the insert that we just placed in the wall plate. And then on the enclosure itself, on the back, there's also an arrow. You just have to align the arrow on the back of the enclosure with the arrow on the wall plate. First, we obviously want to make sure that we connect the HMI connector back to the PCB. Secure everything together. And it will be a little bit of a tight fit. So don't worry about that. Just hold it in place and then insert the M2 by 20 socket head screws in each of the four holes. And we'll just get one of them on each corner secured. I'll just make sure that everything's tightened together. I don't want to tighten it too much though because I don't want the screws to pull on the inserts too much and everything is holding very securely together. So that's it. That's the complete hasp ready to put in the wall. All that's left to do is hook up the AC power to these two wires and configure it. 